Okay, what do acetals and ketals have to do with protecting groups? So let's say we have an aldehyde. And we want to do a reaction. Now I'm having to find what this R group is, but let's say that R group is what we want to do chemistry on. And we'll see some specific examples later, but if we want to do chemistry on that R group, and let's say we want to attack that R group with strong nucleophiles. Well, we're going to have a hard time doing chemistry off on this R group, whatever it might be, in the presence of this aldehyde, because this aldehyde is a weak electrophile. And if we try to react strong nucleophiles with the R group, we're certainly going to end up attacking the carbonyl, which may be what we want to avoid. So as it turns out, acetals and ketals are great ways to convert things like aldehydes, which are electrophiles, into non-electrophiles. So let's look at this reaction that we've already described. Let's say we treat this with methanol and sulfuric acid. What's going to happen to this? Well, we're going to convert the aldehyde into an acetal. So here we get our acetal. Notice we have a weak electrophile in this aldehyde. Now the acetal is no longer a carbonyl. It's no longer a weak electrophile. In fact, if anything, it's kind of like an ether. And what do we remember about ethers? Ethers are great to work with strong nucleophiles. In fact, ethers are the solvents that we use. Uh, they're good aprotic solvents because you can't deprotonate them. They're good, uh, they're good for making things like Grignard reagents because the Grignard reagents can't deprotonate them. They're unreactive. So this is pretty inert to basic or nucleophilic conditions. So we could convert this molecule on the left, convert it into this acetal. Now we're free to do our other chemistry, and we won't define what that is. That's just some other chemistry. And we're going to do some kind of conversion on our, our, our R group, whatever that might be. And as long as we don't react this with acid, we're just fine. Now, why do we have to be careful with acid? Because acetals, just as they form, That you can form an acetal with acid. You can also, in the presence of acid and water, decompose the acetal to get back to the aldehyde. So if we treat this with water and acid, it doesn't have to be sulfuric acid, could be HCl, could, could be any acid. What's going to happen is we're going to hydrolyze our acetal and convert it back into the aldehyde. And so what you see is the overall net effect. We did chemistry on our R group to change it into something else, whatever it might be. And because we were worried about our aldehyde being an electrophile, we got to cover it up and we formed this acetal. So step one was make the protecting group. Step two, and it could have been more than one, two, uh, single step, step two, but you know, then we did our chemistry. And then step three, we deprotected. And so we got our, now our transform molecule. So this is how you can use things like acetals, you could also do it on ketals, to do this kind of chemistry. So carbonyls, because they're electrophilic, sometimes we have to cover them up to do chemistry on another part of a molecule. Acetals and ketals are a great way to do that.